Hello and welcome back to Parasitology and Mycology. This is going to be the third installment of the class nematode presentations. The first organisms we're going to cover are the hookworms, which are Nicator americanus and Encylostoma duodenale. Nicator americanus is known as the New World hookworm and is found in North and South America, Asia, and Africa. Encylostoma duodenale is known as the Old World hookworm and is found in Europe, South America, Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. One fourth of the world's population is assumed to be infected with hookworms, and they're commonly found in moist, warm regions where bare skin contact with contaminated soil is common, and especially in regions with poor sanitation. The morphology of the egg is 55 to 70 by 35 to 40 microns with a thin shell. The rhabditiform larvae of both species have a long buccal cavity and an indistinct genital primordium. The phalariform larvae of both species has a sharp pointed tail with the males measuring 7 to 11 millimeters long with a copulatory bursa and the females measuring 8 to 15 millimeters long. Infection begins with eggs being passed in the stool in favorable conditions, which are moist, warm, and shady regions. Those larvae from the egg hatch in one to two days, releasing the rhabditiform larvae that grow in the feces or soil. After 5 to 10 days, the rhabditiform larvae develop into phalariform or third stage larvae where they are infective. Those infective larvae can survive for 3 to 4 weeks in, in, in ideal environmental conditions. Upon contact with a human, the phalariform larvae penetrate the skin and migrate through the blood vessels and into the heart and then into the lungs. The larvae penetrate the pulmonary alveoli and descend the bronchial tree to the pharynx where they are swallowed. Once they reach the small intestine, they mature and the adults attach to the intestinal wall of the lumen in the small intestine causing blood loss. The pathology of the hookworm can lead to allergic itching at the site of penetration, intraalveolar hemorrhaging from the lung migration, causing pneumonia, wheezing, sore throat, and bloody sputum. Enteritis can occur with heavy infections, edema, loss of strength from the blood loss, and iron deficiency anemia from chronic blood loss, as well as eosinophilia. Treatment is mebendazole and iron replacement from the massive blood loss. To note is that heavy infection can result in up to 100 mils of blood loss per day and is often seen in children with pica. Adults must be differentiated by buccal, capsule, and the bursa. Going back to this slide, on the left here we have the anterior end of both Encylostoma duodenale and Nicator americanus. Encylostoma duodenale is on the left with the teeth, and Nicator americanus is on the right with the distinct cutting plates. Strongyloides stercoralis, also known as the threadworm, causes strongyloidiasis. Distribution is worldwide, but typically seen in warm areas in the tropics and subtropics. It must be differentiated from the hookworm. It can't be differentiated by the egg appearance as it is very similar. And the sedimentation concentration method is the ideal recovery of the larvae. Again, the morphology of the egg is very similar to the hookworm as it is 55 to 70 by 35 to 40 microns and embryonated. So Strongyloides cercoralis has an embryonated egg while the hookworms and Stylostoma duodenale and Nicator americanus have a thin shell. The difference is in the rhabditiform larvae 
the rhabditiform larvae of Strongyloides stercorellus has a short buccal cavity and a large prominent genital primordium. The filariform larvae of Strongyloides stercorellus has a notched tail where the hookworms have a straight tail. The life cycle of Strongyloides stercorellus can alternate between free living and parasitic forms. The rhabditiform larvae pass in the stool and become infective or parasitic or develop into a free living adult male or female. The free living males and females living outside the host produce eggs that hatch into rhabditiform larvae. Those rhabditiform larvae develop into infective and filariform larvae. There, those filariform larvae penetrate the skin of the human host, becoming parasitic, where they migrate into the small intestine. The route to the intestine can either be a way of bloodstream, lungs, bronchial tree, coughed and then swallowed, or the larvae can migrate directly to the small intestine and through the connective tissues. The filariform larvae molt twice in the small intestine to become adults. Females thread themselves into the epithelium of the small intestine where they produce eggs and develop into rhabditiform larvae. Those rhabditiform larvae can either be passed in the stool or cause auto-infection. Auto-infection of the rhabditiform larvae become infective filariform larvae and in the infected filariform larvae penetrate the intestinal mucosa causing internal auto-infection or they can penetrate the skin of the, peri the per perineal area causing external auto-infection. The pathology of Strongyloides stercorellus can cause abdominal pain, diarrhea, hives, eosinophilia, raised itchy whelps from the site of larval penetration, as well as pneumonia, anemia from blood loss, weight loss, and sudden death in immunocompromised individuals. And the top right image we have here um, distinguished features of the hookworm and Strongyloides stercorallis. The treatment of Strongyloides stercorallis is different than hookworms, and so differentiating the rhabditiform larvae is very important. Note, only females are pathogenic. Females are capable of unisexual reproduction, and strongyloidiasis may persist for years due to auto-infection. The sources for these presentations are provided by the CDC that have open license content as well as the medical parasitology a self-instructional text and uh, as well as information sourced from Professor Dale Dingley and his years of experience at the State Laboratory. That concludes the third installment of the class nematoda. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me or message me at the bottom of this page.